Hey everyone, Wayne here. I am filming this in October, and I thought it'd be fun to have a light, fun little Halloween kind of themed, horror themed war game playthrough. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. We are going to play Dead Reckoning, a zombie war game. That's right, zombies and war game combined um, from Tiny Battle Publishing, designed by Herman Lutman, the evil genius himself. Um, thought it'd be fun to just do something light and easy, not worry about a very serious game. However, as you can see, it is a hex encounter game. I got it all set up here. Um, and what it's going to be, it's going to be zombies, zombies, zombies. Whoa, watch out! All right, like I said, we're going to have to watch out. There's going to be zombies all over the place. So, in this game, um, and just before I dive in, I just want to let you guys know that this is just going to be kind of a fun playthrough. Um, you know me, I'll describe everything as I play. I'll tell you my thoughts, but, you know, it's not a tutorial playthrough. It's not a video review, anything like that. We're just going to play for a while. Um, I don't I don't think we'll get through a full game because it does take a little while um, for a full game. It's about three hours. A little longer than I want to film for and a little longer than most of you guys want to watch. But, hey, maybe you guys can watch uh, through a couple action rounds, through a couple turns. Um, we'll get to kind of see how the game plays and have some fun with it. So I have it all set up here. Um, the point of the game is you as the human player. Well, okay, let me actually pause for a second. It is a two-player game, right? So it is... Um, one side plays the humans, and you can barely see at the bottom of the screen probably the human player aid and the zombie player aid. I'm setting up to play solitaire. Um, I'm playing the rules as written other than a couple tweaks. Um, I'll kind of describe as I go. But normally it's one side plays the humans, one side plays the zombies. The humans, um, you have different units. You have your refugees, which are these yellow units here. You're trying to get them westward here off the map, um, off this wagon gap over here uh, to get them off the map to save them. The zombies are going to be coming in from these different spawn points, depending on where they are, um, which turn it is, excuse me. Um, the zombies will be coming in and trying to eat the refugees, right? So you have, as the human player, not only the refugees, you're trying to, you know, get them out of here, run, run, run. You also have um, civilian units, civilian, more like combat units. So you have different police units, some militia units, a hero squad, uh, militia platoon, etc., um, and then you'll later on, as you get reinforcements, you actually have some National Guard military units that show up that can help you, um, that are a lot stronger. So, uh, the counters are set up in such a way that really, it looks, there's letters on here, so it can be a little complicated at first. But in reality, it's just a, um, basically it's like attack, defense, movement. Pretty simple. I'll kind of cover it as I play. Like I said, this isn't a full tutorial, but, I mean, I'll basically explain things so you guys know what's going on here. So... Um, looking at the board here, like I said, I have pretty much everything set up for the most part. Looks like I didn't put out the zombies to start with. So let's go ahead. We have a draw cup for the zombies. Let's draw them. And zombies at start. There's a little spots here. And like here it says turn two, turn one, zombies, etc. So that's where they can spawn from. So let's go ahead and get some of these zombies out here. We got a horde, a mob. And again, I'll kind of cover it as I play so you guys can see um, what exactly I'm talking about here. But let's get them out here. I actually thought I had done uh, the setup. It's a complete setup already, so my apologies there. Uh, I'm going to bore you guys with a setup. It's never fun, but super easy. Just drawn randomly, placing them here. So nice and easy. Okay. All right. Perfect. So it is turn one. In turn one, it's the day. On turn two, it'll be the night. Back to day, et cetera, et cetera, through turn six. Um, now, tied into when I said I, I play it, um, you know, it's a two-player game, technically. I'm playing it solitaire. There's a couple different things that I do to kind of make it a little easier solitaire. First off, it's the initiative setup. Um, and you can't really see, I don't think you guys can see the cards. I have I'm trying to zoom in on the map so you guys can see the action. But there are zombie and human initiative cards. And normally, in a two-player game, you bid um, hidden card so you can't see the value. Well, it doesn't really work for two-player. And I know some people do that. I, I think that's a little a little too much of trying to, you know, play both sides style. So I just do it randomly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from them. So we'll be drawing randomly to determine. I'm going to have to create the decks quick. Very simple. You're just removing a certain amount of cards. So you can actually change the length of the game by removing more cards. I'm going to remove four. The base game is remove three. You can remove four up to five, I think, if you want to be super chaotic. We'll go ahead and just remove four. So, um... I think I have everything all set up, right? Yep, we got the humans here. We got the zombies are showing up on the board here. They're showing up on the map. Um, let's get to it. So, flip a card. Let's flip over the zombie card. So, they have five. Uh oh 
So they're probably going to win initiative and they're going to have the most actions, probably. For the humans. Oh, four. So not too bad. All right. Let me see if you guys can see the number. Yeah, you can't really see the number of uh, actions per se. That's okay. So zombies are going to get five. Humans will get four. And they have uh, these activate activation chits or activated chits. And you go ahead. You just go ahead. And I know you guys can't see the player aid. But I'm going to put five for the zombie. Just to show that I have five actions. And then I'll put four for the humans. So they're going to start off this first action round. Is going to be a bunch of different actions. And that's what the game is divided up into. Um, there are six turns total, day, you know, alternating between day and night turns. And then within those turns, there's going to be these action rounds where this deck of cards you have. Again, I'm not using the bidding. I'm just doing random, just flipping cards over. But it's going to be, you know, four actions and five actions. We'll run through them. That Once they're done, that's one action round. And we'll go to the next card. And you continue through until all the cards are gone. And then that's an end of a turn. So... It's turning into a tutorial. I don't even mean to. I just wanted to play it, but I want to explain that so you guys understand kind of what's going on here. So, um, let's see here. Do, do, do. All right. So, but what you do is, put one, two, three, humans. All right. So, with these zombies having five actions and the humans having four, the zombies are going to get to go first. Uh, what they'll do is, when you have more actions, you get to go ahead and use as many actions more than you have until it's equal to, and then they start taking turns going back and forth. Whoever has the most to start for that action round, which in which case the zombies, they're always going to go first and always going to go last. So what's going to happen is they're going to take the first action here. Let's see. And what I'm going to do for an action, for sure, I want to get my zombies as a zombie player, right? We need to get the zombies closer to these uh, refugees. So we're going to do the brains action here. It's a brains action. Once per action round max. You play, pre, or excuse me, place the brains marker on any zombie unit. That unit and it, all adjacent units conduct a swarm action, which a swarm is kind of the zombie's main action of them moving and attacking. Let's go ahead, because it's, it affects adjacent units, let's put it on this horde right here. So then we're going to be able to activate all three of these for swarm. So let's go ahead and move this mob here. Now I'll show you. Like I said, um, the letters are on here. It's going to be... Uh, attack, defense, and movement. Now it is, yeah, the first time you play, you're going to be like, what are all these letters? But the nice thing is, is each of these play rates has it listed. So the attack, or assault rating as the game calls it, um, is going to tell you. It's going to be a V, a B, excuse me, a B for berserk, a V for vicious, or a D for dangerous. This is a V, so they're vicious. Um, defense is either going to be I for iron, T for tough, C for crusty. <laughs> crusty. He's T, so he's tough. So he's vicious and tough, and his movement speed is a W that means a walk, the zombie walk. They have a U for a shamble, one hex. Walk is two hexes, means he can move two hexes. A zombie trot, he can move three hexes, and that would be a Z. His W is he can move two hexes. Um, clear terrain is one movement. Road, he gets a free movement. And then train like, say, uh, the forest here is going to take two movements. So... He can move one here. It looks like the refugees are all in the woods, so he's not going to be able to enter with them. Unfortunately for him, fortunately for the humans, they will not get eaten yet. So we're going to put an activated marker on him. Boom, he's done. Now we have, uh, you know, what is he at? Let's see, he's a walk. So he has two. Now he can move two hexes, but if he's on a road, he gets a free movement. Basically, um, zombies move faster on roads, just like the humans do, because it's, you know, flat, even surface. So he gets a free movement. One. Now we can move two, so we'll go one more here. Now he has to stop here because um, he's adjacent to human units on both sides. Now he has one more movement hex. He can't go into the woods here. Let me double check the hero human he unit here, the militia hero, is in this building. I don't think, I can't remember, I don't think buildings take an extra movement to enter or anything like that. So. Um, let's go ahead and double check here. This is why this isn't a full tutorial. I, mean, I played the game a couple times, but sometimes I forget stuff like that where it's like, wait, is it an extra movement for a building? Or let's see. Okay, buildings have no effect on movement. All right. So actually, so he's going to get his free movement, one, and then he's going to go ahead. This uh, zombie horde here uh, is going to move into this, uh, the. What is it? The Wolves Industrial Park and attack our hero squad here. Oh no! Zombies! Alright. Combat. Super simple. Um, zombies obviously only do close combat. They don't do fire combat. Some of the human units are going to be able to do fire combat. We're going to have a close combat. 
He enters the hex with the human unit. You start, you have zombie cards, um, human combat cards, zombie cards. I'll flip them over. I'll show you, we'll just show you the top ones. I have a deck off to the right side. I don't think you can see it on camera. Um, go ahead, we're going to flip over for each side. And you go ahead and just read what it has on here. There's a couple things you're looking at. In this case, uh, the zombie's attacking. Obviously, it's going to be a close combat attack. The radiated symbol is a hit for the zombies. And the bullet is a hit when we're talking about the um, humans. So in this case, we look at close combat attack. One hit if night. Well, it's a day turn, so there's not going to be a hit from the zombie. Now we check the human card. Flip it over. We look at close combat defense. You can see on the human card, they also have fire combat attack and close combat attack. Um, so it'll be close combat defense. And you check the actual what down here. So it says two hits if a personal weapon, one hit if rifle. Very simple. You look over at your human unit. It's the first, remember, just like most war games, attack, defense, movement. So the first uh, thing you're looking at is the H. That's for heavy. Humans will have heavy weapons, H, R is rifles, P is personal weapons, N is no weapons at all. So he has a heavy weapon. So it actually doesn't help him in this case because his defense only would have been helped by personal weapons or rifle. So two things are going on right now. One, we have no hits. All right, so there's no hits happen at all. Now, you can't have a combat because in the same hex, you kind of have to figure out what's going to happen here. So what you then look at is tenacity. So what you're looking at is the... Um, actual bravery of the human versus the frightfulness of the zombie. So I'll show you on here. The zombie, if you see, it has the skull, like skull and crossbone style. There's four of them. The human has five bravery. He's a hero unit, so he has five. He has the most. He has a higher bravery than the horde zombie unit has uh, frightfulness or fear factor, I guess it is. Fear factor, sorry. Um, so that means he's going to win the combat in the sense that he's not scared, he's not going to retreat, and you could say he pushes the pushes the zombies back. So the zombies will end up retreating back to the hex that they came from. Now another thing we're going to do, we're not quite done with combat, so the combat's basically done, but there's one more thing. Because both combat cards, and you should be able to see them on the screen now, have this chaos written on top, that means something random is going to happen. Uh-oh. How do you figure it out? Simple. You look at the value in the top corner. So we have a four and a five. You add them together, we get a nine. We go ahead, we have a chart in the rule book. We look at under nine. Undead reanimation. The zombie player may choose one of two options. Move one damage level from each of three different units on the map, or place all previously eliminated zombie units back into the zombie unit cup. Um, they did not take any damage yet, and they have no eliminated units. So didn't help them so much. Sometimes, though, it's going to help them. Sometimes it gives the zombies free movements. Sometimes it lets the humans have reinforcements show up, artillery bombardment, airstrikes. You never know. It's a chaos table, random events table. You never know what's going to happen. So those are two of the zombie units. This is the last one. He gets to go. Let's go ahead and put this little activated near him so we know. He is, oh, Z, zombie trot. Let's go ahead and move him one. And clearly he's going to move and attack human right here so he's gonna move in and attack that hero so that hero is gonna to have to do another combat so same deal we'll go ahead and flip our cards over close combat attack one att one hit if night now it's daytime and this one close combat defense one hit if day one hit if enemy damaged he wasn't damaged but it is daylight so there's gonna be a hit now the activated markers on the other side of them these are basically the hit markers it's either wounded or mangled it says wounded means if it's a human mangled it's if it was on a zombie so we mangle so the hero our hero humans mangle this horde of zombies a little bit and obviously they lose the combat since they took a hit and the humans did not and they're pushed back um, to their attacking hex all right that was it for the zombies uh activation so now the humans have four zombies have four so what that means at this point is the humans will go and now it's going to alternate back and forth with the zombies having the last action so the humans here. Let's go ahead. I don't like having my uh, hero unit here surrounded, so let's just start shooting back and trying to eliminate some of these uh, some of these zombies here. So he's gonna go ahead. I'm gonna activate the hero, and one thing you can do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him a. Um, hang on a second. So what I do is a couple things. One, I'm gonna give him the 
follow me order, which is once per action on maximum. Only the uh, hero unit can do that. And then one of the things I'm going to use, and it's an optional rule, is that sometimes he can only activate fellow um, civilian units or militia SWAT police. However, with an optional rule, you can use him to activate the refugees, which makes sense. He's a hero. He's cool. If I'm going to be telling the counter, he's got a motorcycle. So I'm going to say the refugees listen to him. So he's going to activate everybody around him. Everybody's adjacent. So he'll activate, and so will both the um, refugee counters, refugees uh, units near him. So I'm just going to go ahead and move them first, show that they activated. So their walk speed, so they get to move two hexes. So one into the road. And then a road reduces is only half for humans. One and a half, two. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little activation marker on there so we know for sure. And then same with this guy here. We go ahead, he has a walk speed. Uh, and all the refugees are all different. There's regular refugees, there's riffraff, and then there's VIPs. On the back side, and I'm not there's a number, and that's the number of victory points, and you're trying to remove them from the game. I mentioned already, obviously, the refugees trying to get them off the map. Some of them are, are worth more victory points than others. So one, one and a half, two. So we're going to move them there. You will manipulate the counters a little bit, um, you know, if you need to. I Sometimes I use my, I got my tweezers I can use sometimes. Usually uh, when I'm playing by myself. So I just know that when I'm using a tweezers on camera, I've had people comment saying it looks kind of, they don't like it. I don't know if it's because it takes a little longer to manipulate. I don't know. I don't know. Like seeing with the hand. I don't know what the deal is, but um, just depends. Whatever you want to do. Um, there are a lot of counters like you'll sometimes manipulate, so depending on how well you can grab them, you may want to use like a big tweezers or something, so no big deal. Standard war game stuff. Alright, so both of them, we got them moved, now we have our hero activating. Let's go ahead and uh, let's shoot. So let's go ahead and shoot at this zombie, uh, what are we at? Is he a horde? Yeah, let's shoot at this horde that's already damaged, and let's try to unleash some fury. So we're going to do a fire combat. So we don't have to move into the hex, of course. We have a certain range. And it'll tell you um, heavy weapons, which Hero Unit has right now. He has a range of five hexes. So one hex away, no big deal. All right, he goes and shoots. Fire combat attack. Two hits if a heavy weapon. Nice. So that will eliminate him, depending on what we get here. Fire combat defense. Minus one hit if iron or tough. All right, he is tough, so that reduces those two hits to one hit. So, he already... He already had a hit counter on him. He's already mangled. So what you do then, you flip the counter over. So now he has a stripe on the bottom, so he is kind of reduced. He's smaller, a little weaker, everything like that. If he gets one more hit, he'll be eliminated. All right. Um, you can check, see there's no chaos written on the combat card, so no big deal there. Okay, and that was our activation. Um, we did the follow me order, the humans. Now we go over to the zombies. Then you go ahead and activate... Let's see, what are they going to do here? Um, all these guys are activated. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Let's see, they're going to uh, do a swarm action. Activate this mob right here. And he's going to swarm. He has a Z for movement, zombie trot. So he's going to be able to go one, two. Oh, he still can't do it, though, because the they're in the woods. That's two movement. So he can't. So he's stuck here. Oh, bummer for the zombie. Too bad. All right, back to the humans here. Um, we definitely want to kind of unleash on some of these uh, zombies here. So before they kind of get moving on me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate um, my police SWAT unit down here at the secondary school with their heavy weapons. They're going to shoot at this horde right here because they're a berserk horde. So they got I know that they're a pretty tough, uh, pretty tough group here. So let's go ahead and shoot at them. We'll do a combat. Fire combat attack, one hit of heavy weapons, which the police SWAT does have heavy weapons. And now fire combat defense, minus one if they're in any cover, they're in an open hex, a clear hex, so they take a hit. Perfect. They are mangled. All right. Suck at zombies. All right. Now back to the zombie player. Um, and again, you know, obviously you're playing both sides here. This is not a, it's not a solitaire game, but I mean, it's fairly they kind of know what you're going to do um as the humans have the most opportunity for movement with their vehicles and different units that have a higher movement the zombies are pretty much a slower shambling horde that are going to be you know start here and then they'll start popping on appearing on the sides of the map coming in as you kind of are getting the refugees so the way it works works really well um speaking of which should we get some reinforcements no i think we're good 
Yeah, let's we're good for now. So, as the zombies, let's go ahead and activate that horde that got shot. Shot by the SWAT. They didn't like that. So, they're on a road already, so they'll get one free movement. Let's see if we can move here. And they're at a walk. They have a walk speed, so they get to move two hexes. So, they'll go one, two. And they get to move into that hex. And they're going to go ahead, drop our activity marker, um, and try to engage in uh, close combat. Flip her over. Close combat attack. One hit if larger, which a horde versus a squad. There's side size ratings, but basically it's company horde. So human, uh, zombie, company and horde, platoon and mob, squad and pack. So a horde is larger than a squad. So there's going to be one hit depending on what the defense is. Close combat defense. Okay, one hit if day and one hit if heavy weapons. All right. So... What happens is, so humans still take that hit um, from it. Then you know the zombies being larger, they're able to swarm them a little bit and get a hit on them. So I put that um, wounded counter underneath. But the zombies, they're already wounded. They're gonna take two hits. So one hit uh, flips them over and reduces them, and then the other hit destroys them. Bah, 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 Destroy. No more zombie horde. All right, done. And he is eliminated, removed from the game uh, for now. And place in the zombie dead um, box over here. So, good job, humans. I wish they like leveled up or something, got tougher. But hey, whatever. They took them out. Good job. But oh, don't worry, it ain't, it's not over yet. I better put that on there. Show he's been activated already. Boom. Okay. Now speaking of activation, it's a humans activation here. Um, oh man, it's. I suppose I could move that vehicle up, maybe. Yeah, I better. So I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the human, the police platoon here. He's a vehicle, which means he gets to move up six hexes, which is only half a hex on the road. So he's going to be able to haul. So he'll go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, um, four and a half. Let's just stop right here. Oh, wait, it stops a little bit farther back. We'll see. I don't. Uh, yeah, we'll stop right there. That'd be perfect. Okay. All right. Now back to the zombies. Zombies, um, they're not doing so hot right now. Well, they get a little bit of work up in here, but other than that, not too great. So I think they're going to go ahead and try to call in some reinforcements. So what they're going to do, they're going to spend one of their activations to do an undead whale. Undead whale. I go ahead and I have my cup with the uh, zombie units. Go ahead and draw a random one. Boom. Get that undead will on there. And he gets placed uh, adjacent to a current unit. So, I'm going to go ahead and place him right in here. <laughs> Stupid humans. All right. And let's go ahead. He can't activate this action round. Um, he has a marker on him to show that. But, hey, he's there now. So, I'm back to the humans. They only have one activation left. And what I usually do on my last activation is the humans. I use that to send the SOS. Which the SOS is, I get to draw from my couple of military units. We can draw a random one. So we got the, what is this? National Guard Platoon. Heavy, armored, and fast unit. Not too bad. Put that on him. Um, they spawn out here, over here at the Wagon Gap on one of these hexes. So I'm going to put them right on the road here. And then they get half their movement when they're coming as reinforcements. So fast is normally four hexes. He only gets two hexes in movement. Go ahead, send him, let's see, shoo, send him down this way. So we'll go half a hex, one, one and a half, two. So I'll use up all this movement. Boom, right there. All right, and now back to the zombies for their final activation of this action round. Uh, yeah, we're running, out of, we're running out of guys right now. That's okay, though. Everything resets here. Once this last action is done, things are going to reset. So let's go ahead, activate this horde right here. Um, he's walking speed, so he gets to move two hexes. So, one, one, two. Well, right there, adjacent to the human unit. So, all right, that is it for this action round. So, what you do, very simple. Go ahead, go around, and just remove all the, like, different markers you had used, you know, the special markers. So, anything, undead whale, brains, SOS, and then all the activated markers. Go ahead and grab up all those bad boys. Because now, with the new action round, we'll flip over a new card. See how many actions each side gets. 
and continue on. I'd say the zombies are moving up a little bit. I mean, they're definitely, well, they, they're here. They've closed right in the middle. They have closed for sure. So in the north, kind of the middle in the north here, down here, not so much. So all right, I believe that's everything. All right, yeah, we are reset. Go ahead and dis discard these cards. Get some new initiative cards. Zombies are going to have four humans. One. Wah, wah. Oh, watch out for that zombie horde. Watch out. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and give uh, four of these little activated tokens to our little zombies. And one to the human. Wah, wah. Oh, man. That's a bummer for them. All right. So let's get in here. We got... Oh, I know what they're going to do right away. I can tell. All right, so what we're gonna do with the uh, little zombies here, use their first one, brains. They're gonna activate this horde right here with brains, which means all adjacent are gonna get to swarm, which is one, two, three. Well, then himself too, that's four. So, ooh, that's pretty brutal for him. So, pretty brutal for the humans, I mean. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and start at the bottom here. Just We'll just work our way up. So this mob here is gonna go ahead and move into this hex with the hero and attack him. Um, close combat, it's close combat attack. One hit if berserk or vicious. This mob of zombies is vicious. So they're gonna get, what is it? I said one hit, yep, one hit. Depending on the defense. One hit and minus one in any cover. Oh, and the building I believe counts as cover. So, uh, yep, it's any cover. So not only does it reduce that hit to nothing, but then the humans actually get a hit on the zombie here, which he was already flipped over, so he's eliminated. Ooh, bad luck for those zombies. However, just so we don't forget, if you notice, chaos and chaos. What? So 7 plus 6 is 13. Let's go ahead and check our little chaos table back here. A 13 inspirational fight. The human player may select any one friendly unit within two hexes of the combating human unit. And after any required treatment was conducted. The select unit may now conduct a fire combat or move one hex into his unmarked hex and conduct close combat. All right. Two hexes. Okay, within two hexes. So, oh, right here. Boom. We have a police platoon here. Boom. They're going to go ahead and fire on that pack. Nice. All right. So, yeah, police platoon here is going to fire at this pack of zombies. Let's roll. Or roll. Let's flip. See, so, yeah, no roll into this one. Uh, fire combat. If uh, One hit of heavy weapons. Wah, wah. Rifle. So, not good. But then you just go ahead and you flip over for the zombies. Fire combat defense. Minus one of zombie trot. And actually dead trot as well. So it reduced one hit. So, oh well. Hey, it was a shot anyway, right? So, all right. So that was the one zombies down here. Now we do have everyone else starting to activate. So let's go ahead and do this one right here. He's going to try to move into this hex and attack this riffraff refugees. Close combat. One hit if enemy damage. He's not damaged, so there's not going to be any hits. Close combat defense. Minus one hit if in building cover. It's in the woods, but there was no hits anyway. So no big deal there. Basically no effect. All right. And then this pack here is going to go ahead. Let's see. Are they one hex away? Yeah. Uh, well, their goal is to stop the... Yeah. Or just get the refugees. So this... Pack here is going to move into this hex and, uh, up here, upper, left, right, left, north, left, whatever, and attack the <laughs> attack the uh, um, refugees right there. So go ahead and flip for uh, close combat. One if horrified, one hit if horrified, two hit if horrified times two. So horrified, what you do is you go ahead and you look, compare the um, fear factor versus the bravery, which this pack only has a fear factor of one, so they're just ugly, basically, is what the game calls it. Um, and then the bravery is one, so it's a tie, which means there's going to be no hits. Then we go ahead and check the close combat here, close combat defense. If armored or shielded, there would be results. Um, it's a light unit because it's refugees. They're, I think they're all light, so no effects there. So basically, um, all right, so no hits, um, no effects from the hits, no chaos. And then you check for, remember, the tenacity, so you check the... Um, fear factor versus the bravery, which is equal, which means you actually flip another card for combat for each side. So close combat attack, two hits of berserk, one hit if vicious. He is 
dangerous, so no hits. I'm going to go ahead and back to look for here. Close combat, one hit if vehicular. Um, so no result there. No chaos. Check tenacity, they're the exact same. So again, you keep flipping. Close combat attack, one hit if larger, which he's a pack versus the squad. Actually the same size, so there's going to be no hits. Here, um, close combat defense, one hit if enemy damage. Now there's chaos, so that'll be eight. Chaos is critical battle. A player who drew the highest number chaos card takes a critical battle chip. Ooh, sweet. So it's the humans. Um, if both players draw the four card, I don't know. So it's critical battle, so we can go ahead and take that chip, so we can hang on to that chip. Um, that is a special thing you can do. All right, choo -choo. so, um, all right, so the combat continues. Plus combat, plus one of night, plus one of enemy damage. Nope. And then plus combat defense, one hit, and one if armored or shielded, which we're not. This basically continues. So combat's continuing. It's a little annoying because let's see, plus one of horrified. There's not horrified. Um, vehicular, no. Caught a little combat loop here. Horde, if mob. Here you go. One hit if mob. Which he's a mob. Oh no, he's not, he's a pack. And then close combat, one if enemy damaged, he's not. Continue forever. Um, Berserker vicious, he's dangerous, so nothing. If armored, he's not, he's light. What's happening? One if enemy damaged. I don't know if I've ever had this happen before. Armored or shielded. Let me check the rules. Maybe I messed it up. I thought you just keep going. Let's see. Let's check this. Let's check this because I feel like I messed it up. All right. Uh, if number hits inflict any size equal, check the tenacity, create the humans. Okay. There's no limit to number. Yeah, if both values are equal for tenacity, then neither unit wins. Another close combat must be fought immediately. Resolve normally. If there's no limit to the number of consecutive combats that can be fought. So I'm going to go to infinity on this. Okay, I'm flipping like one more, and then I'm done. All right. No hits because it's, it's dangerous. And then close combat defense. Here we go. Actually, this now we finally got one. One hit and minus one hit in other cover. So a couple things happen here. Um, so I do get a hit on him on the pack here. Um, so he loses the combat and that's chaos as well. Because I'm in other cover. I'm in the woods. So that was ridiculous. I never had a combat go with flipping that many cards in a row. That was weird. So you guys got to see a little bit of a weird situation there. But normally combats are decided by basically one card flip for each side generally. Um, okay, so the zombie took a hit. He's mangled. Now we have chaos again, so we're going to go ahead and check. Four, five, six, seven. We just have a seven? Nope, seven. Mad Minute. The human player may select one unit and conduct an immediate fire combat with it. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do... This the squad here is going to attack there. So, fire combat. Heavy One hit of heavy weapons or rifle, so we get a hit. And there, fire combat defense. No effect. Boom, so he takes a hit. So it's pack is flipped over which he has no backside so he is eliminated nice good job humans all right okay so that would have been that was the last uh zombie to activate as part of the brains action i believe right guys the combat that one combat took so freaking long i forgot I forgot where i was pretty sure that's what it was because i did brains activated activated and now actually he gets activated still i remember now so all right, shuffle the cards quick. So when you're done with, you know, use up all the cards, you just shuffle them again. So, um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and have the this zombie unit brains move into here and attack that hero. They're trying to, these zombies are sick of that hero. Enough from him. They're rushing in here, this horde. Ugh, brains. Close combat. Let's see what they can do. Close combat. Attack. One if, hit of night. One hit of enemy damage. Neither applies. No hits. Human close combat defense armored he is armored so it's he gets one hit and minus two hits against him he didn't suffer any hits anyway but he does get one hit on this zombie Dude, this hero is a badass all right i guess that's why he's a hero right so zombie loses the combat so he retreats back to his uh, hex there boom well that was a lot of work for one thing but hey that's what happens sometimes so all right um da -da -da. Oh, yeah, here. Yep, so the zombie player gets to go ahead and activate. They have a couple more activations before the human goes. So the zombie player, just so you know, has three left. Human player has one left. All right, so this activation. 
Mm. Uh, trying to kill these refugees first, so they're going to activate this mob to attack into this hex with these refugees, because that's their goal, right, is to stop them, technically. So, uh, card, uh, close combat attack, one hit if enemy damaged, enemy is not damaged. Close combat defense, one hit and minus one hit in other cover, she's in the woods. So actually gets a hit off on the uh, mob here. Stupid zombies are getting whooped. Zombies aren't that scary, are they? Whoa, watch out. All right. Now we have a chaos. Chaos on both cards. Seven and four. So that is an 11. Uh-oh. That's not good for us, I don't think. Yeah, I hate... Oh, man. Bad for the humans. I say us because I'm kind of imagining us as the humans fighting against the zombies. You know, it's hard to take the zombie's side in this conflict. All right, so we got an 11. The Walking Undead. The zombie player may immediately move a number of zombies depending on the current game turn. On a daytime, move up to four. On night, move up to eight. Daytime, take it to move four. Um, he's already good here. We'll do him one, two. Uh, and then here, we'll go. It's a free one. One, two, I think. Yeah, that'll be good there. So, and that's it. Okay, all right. Ooh. Zombies get another activation here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate... This vicious horde right here to attack these police SWAT who've been stomping on zombies down there. Let's go ahead and they're going to activate, move into the hex. Close combat. Just looking at horrified. So three to four. Three, three fear factor versus four bravery. So no effects. They're not horrified at all. Um, and then close combat here in defense. Two personal weapons, one if rifle. Uh, it's heavy weapon, so no effect there. No help, I should say. Um, but the human has four bravery, and the zombies have three fear factors. So they lose that. They lose a tenacity battle. So they have to retreat. All right, so now we're down to just uh, one activation each, which means the human will go, and then the zombie will go last. The humans, with their one activation, they're definitely going to use SOS chit, SOS chit excuse me, um, to spawn the... A uh, good military unit to get the National Guard platoon here. Vehicle. Spawns here Wagon Gap. And he has a vehicle. Has a normal six hexes. Half movement on reinforcements. So he gets to only move three. Um, those are half. One and a half. Excuse me. Half. One. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Three. So it'll be right here. All right. Zombies will go. They have... What are they going to do? They're going to focus on this horde, this vicious horde, is going to attack these refugees right here. So you can move into that forest hex and attack them. Close combat. Two if berserk, one if vicious. He's vicious, so one hit. The humans, close combat defense, one if vehicular. They're not, they're on foot. So they take a hit. This riffraff of uh, refugees. They are wounded. Not good for them. Uh, there we go. Okay. Ooh. And that is it. Everyone has used up their activations. So go ahead and... Uh-oh. I think did I forget the critical human battle. I, don't, I think I forgot to use that. Oh, man. I'm not going to go back if I did forget, but... Uh... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So... Um... I think you just hang on to it, though. So that's cool. So we're just going to hang on to it, like, forever now. Until I remember to use it. So, anyway. Um, that was the end of that action round. So, let's grab these cards. Let's go ahead and grab up our uh, different little markers. Put them back here. Activation markers. Brains. Get that back here. Activation. Is that everything? All right, looking good. Okay, flip over the initiative. Zombies get a three. Humans get a three. Oh, that is, okay, that is called a lull. If so, if you get the same, so if you bid the same, or in this case, randomly the same, same number, so three each, it's a lull. Which, what that means is that basically there's only one action taken, and it's taken by, depending on whether it's day or night, if it's a day, 
the humans get one activation, which it is daytime, so they get one activation. Um, and the, because it's daytime, the zombies are going to get zero, so they can not do anything in this action round. Bummer for them. Um, of course, the humans only get one, but hey. Um, speaking of which, with our one <laughs> humans, let's go ahead and use it for the SOS um, to draw military unit, to draw them, so we get the, uh, what is this? National Guard Company, all right. Vehicle, put it there. And he'll go ahead and he'll go half a one, one, one and a half, two, and then three. He'll move there. Yeah, that'll be fine. And that is it. So that is it for this action round. So if you ever get that, you ever get that tie, I mean, fly, boom, action round. Is, I don't say wasted because, you know, one side gets one action, but... Definitely, you know, it just sort of creates a little bit of chaos. You never know exactly what you're going to be able to do. So, all right, we'll go ahead and reset everything. Oh, done. <laughs> and now we go ahead and flip over the next one. Humans get a two. Zombies get a two. Oh, what? Lol. Um, okay, well, this is what it is. So, humans get their two. Zombies get, or humans get one, I should say. Zombies get none. With their one, humans will once again, I dropped it in there, um, use the SOS marker. Get reinforcements, National Guard platoon, very nice. Go ahead and send them then up here. So um, fast movement, so we get to move four hexes or two. So half a one, one, one and a half, two. So you move right here. All right, and that's it for this action round. Last card, flip it over. Hopefully it's not the tie again. What? Okay, so. Humans get one more action. Zombies get nothing for the last action round of this turn. Um, now, keep in mind, though, you may say, well, that's crazy, but it's the next turn, during the nighttime. If there's any ties like that, the zombies get to get an action. The humans get none. So it kind of balances out that way. All right, so for their one action, I'm not going to use SOS. We're going to use SOS. They're going to call for reinforcements. The humans are. Place them right here. National Guard Company. Very nice. Let's see, where do I want to put circular reinforcements? One up here, one down here. Uh, yeah. We'll send him north as well. So half a one, one, one and a half. Then he'll we'll have to stop there. He can't go any farther because he can't stack. So, all right. I think that's it for, that's it. Um, so now that is the end of the turn. So we go through the couple of things for uh, the end of the turn action. Um, we have something called the refugee migration step. Which is these refugees? Um, you may have been wondering. Well, I haven't been activating them, Wayne. What is it? Where are they, what's going to happen? How are they going to get out of there? Zombies are going to eat them. Very simple. Uh, you go ahead and you flip over. Um, well, where is it? Here we go. No, lost. Lost where it was. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, you flip over a card, and based on, so flip over one of our combat cards. Boom. We look at the number in the top corner. We got a fourteen, which is good. Good for us. Higher the better. Um, that determines how many refugees you can move. So refugee migration step here in the book. Uh, we got, was a 14? 14 through 16, we can move seven refugees. All right. Good for us. What I like to do is focus on the VIPs. Sorry, they're worth more. They're worth more. And move them first. So walking speed, I think they all have walking speed. Yeah, so it basically means they get to move uh, two Xs. So move one or two movement points, whatever. Um, one. Half a one, one and a half, and two. So move him. Um, how many can I get to say? I get to move seven. Yeah, seven. So that's one. I'll rotate him just so I remember. Um, one, two. Ooh. Not that it went in the woods. One, one and a half, two. Right here. So that's three of them. Here we go. One, one and a half, two. That's four. No, oh, actually, no. Here we go. Here, here. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five. So I move five. So now I can move two more. The regulars are the best. Next best one's probably to move. So regular here's already on the road. So we'll go half a one, one, one and a half, two. And then this regular here will go one, one and a half, two. Boom. That's seven. All right. So now we have our. Uh, VIPs slash refugees and regulars too. So get some refugee movement. Uh, looks like we're kind of sacrificing these guys to zombies. 
Sorry. You know, apparently only the strong survive, I guess. The zombie apocalypse. All right. So that was the refugee migration. Now I do the zombie host step, um, which is the any zombie unit that's more than uh, four hexes from a human unit can be removed from the game and thrown back in the cup. That way, if you somehow get, and I've had this happen before where you get units, you know, kind of trapped behind, maybe they were never activated, whatever. Um, they're kind of back behind the action. You think, oh, they're never going to catch up. You can just go ahead and remove them from the board. However, right now, all of our units are basically, all the zombie units are adjacent to a human unit. So no worries there. Um, now you do the undead avalanche step, which you draw new units equal to half of a card number rounded up. So the zombies, we have their zombie combat. Flip it over. A two. <laughs> So one, so divided by two is one. So they get one new unit out of the cup. Um, and this unit, this uh, zombie mob, can be placed in either any of the start spaces or because it's turn one, where it says zombies turn one. You'll then see zombies turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five. On those turns, they can be placed either at that spot or any of the previous ones, if that makes sense. So in this case, we kind of want to get jump started a little bit. So instead of starting back here, We'll go ahead and start him up here. Well, yeah, right here. Boom. All right. Um, then you do well, advanced game turn marker. So now we go from turn one day, turn two, flip the marker over. So now it's the nighttime. All right. Oh, and let's see where we are at on our time. 46 minutes. All right, yeah, let's uh keep going a little bit. Um again, like I I'm not gonna play a three-hour game and film a three-hour game for you guys um if you really want to i can but uh judging by how the viewership works generally any videos that are more than an hour really more than probably half an hour um, viewership drops off quite a bit so i try not to film longer than an hour plus for my sake too right i don't want to be sounding tired and fatigued as i'm playing because um it's just not fun for you guys so let's go ahead um we're starting this new turn what we do is set up our initiative deck so those cards, you know, those initial cards, right, for the humans and zombies. You go ahead and you shuffle it up, um, and then you discard up to, you know, depending on how many cards you want to discard, how, how fast you want the turns to go. I want them to go a little bit faster than normal. Normally remove three cards. I think I mentioned this before. This time I'm going to remove four. So just kind of shuffle it up. And then one, two, three, four. That way, right now, each of my uh, turns is only going to be five cards or five separate action rounds. So... I'll do, I'll do the same thing with the uh, old zombies here. Zombies. So, so far, let's look at the board here. We got zombies up here trying to snack on people. And I'm going to tell you, judging by how this looks, they're going to get some refugees. They're going to eat some refugees this turn. It's Those refugees are done, though. Um, our heroes are holding, heroes holding tight here, but they may have to start backing up with the refugees soon. This police SWAT unit down here, I don't know what's happening with him. He's got, you know, he's got a pack and a horde on him. I'm just not sure. So we'll see though. All right. Let's go ahead. Get our cards ready. Leave everything set up for the next uh next turn. Slip them over. Human's got a two. Zombie's got a three. All right. So I think it was another lull. So the zombies will get three actions. And the humans get two. So the zombies get to go first. Um with their first one. What should they do? All right, they're going to use... Yep, they're going to... Um, actually, they're going to go ahead and do a... Um, brains! And they're going to do brains on this mob here. And activate both of these. Because they want to try to start eating some of these refugees. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, no... I, I know what they're going to do. Okay, so this mob... Of zombies gonna attack the refugees right there. So he moves into the hex and attacks. Close combat. Close combat. One hit if night, which it is. One hit if enemy's damage. Do not, but it's one hit because it is nighttime. Um, close combat defense. Minus one if in building cover. He's in other cover because it's the woods. So he does take a hit. So these refugees are wounded. And they're gonna go ahead and retreat. Um, because it was a combat. I'm gonna treat him up here. Might have been a mistake, but too late now. All right. Now, these uh, zombie horde here, he's going to attack those heroes. So they're sick of these heroes blasting them away. All right, close combat. One hit if horrified. Two hits if horrified times two. There's no horrified. In fact, the uh, humans are way tougher. 
Close combat defense, one hit if vehicular, which they are. So this horde has actually flipped over. Ugh. He's already mangled, so he's flipped over to a reduced side. And he has to retreat back to his own hex. Ooh, didn't go so hot there. All right. Um, now we have two activations each, so now it's going to go over to the human side. Do they get to activate? Um, they're going to go ahead and use the activation shit here on... What should they do? Uh... All right, let's just... I'm going to try to blast these zombies here. So they're going to activate the hero squad with a fire combat. So fire combat here is th three hits of heavy weapon. It's a heavy weapon, so three hits. Um, zombies defense, fire defense. Minus one hit of iron. He is iron, so it's only two hits only. Um, he is annihilated. So, blown up. Now, very nice. Good to the humans. However, if we look, we see we got chaos. We got a chaos one, chaos five. So, it's level six. Let's check our chaos chart. Six, infection. The zombie player may infect any one human unit that has a damage marker. Immediately eliminate the second unit and replace it with a randomly drawn zombie unit. Oh, my God. All right, so they're going to look around. Oh, yeah, they know what they're going to do. Zombies, they know. So the uh, police SWAT squad that was holding out the elementary school, secondary school. Yeah, no. They're zombies now. They're a horde. A horde of dangerous zombies. Ah! And so the human dead, the police SWAT unit, you fought violently. Go ahead and throw up your human dead box. So, wow. It suddenly changed the balance power down here a little bit. Uh-oh. Um... And what was that? What did I do? That was the okay, that was the uh, chaos. So, all right, the uh, zombies get to go. And what they're gonna do is they get to do a um, either one of their actions. Excuse me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the uh, undead whale, undead whale, which when it's the nighttime, you get to go ahead and draw two, and pick which one you want to place. So, cause you picked the better one. So we have what do we have here? A pack and a horde. Oh no, contest. The pack's going back in the box. Horde will spawn. I can spawn him adjacent to any unit I want. I'm gonna go ahead and put him right here. Yeah, that'll work. Boom. All right, now the humans will go ahead and activate. Um, they do want to keep fighting off the zombies, but they I need to use the SOS. Uh, yeah, I only I only have the one action left, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my last one. It's gonna be for SOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw from a military unit. Place him here. What is it? Special Ops Squad, heavy weapons, cool. All right, let's go ahead and move him to the south here. So half of one, one, one and a half. I'll have to stop there because he can't stack. Mark on him. Boom, now zombies for their last action here. Use all their special actions up so it doesn't go into a regular action. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this horde here and try to attack. Uh, to enter this hex to close combat against the human refugees there, so. Close combat, one hit if night, it is nighttime. Close combat defense, one hit if day, one hit if enemy damaged, neither apply. So that means the refugees here are going to take a hit, which refugees are not going to flipped over. They are eliminated if they're already wounded, which he was. So ref first refugee is eliminated from the game. All right. Good job, zombies. Not good humans. And I'm pretty sure this rough, rough refugee they're going down to. All right, so it takes over that hex, and now da -da -da, chaos a seven. Uh oh, seven is the movement, isn't it? No, oh, mad minute. Human player may select any one unit and conduct an immediate fire combat. Nice, nice. All right, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and do. Uh, let's go ahead and select our police platoon here. We're gonna fire at that hex right there. That zombie unit. So fire combat. One of heavy weapons. He has rifles, so it's gonna be no effect. Uh, for our combat defense, minus one if in any cover. He's not, but it was no hits anyway, so no big deal there. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, was that it? Yeah, that was it uh, for the last action there. So go ahead and cards. Boom, boom, boom. Move our little markers back. You know the deal, guys, at this point. Back to these markers. Don't forget the undead whale. Don't forget the... Brains marker. Boom. All right, now we go ahead and flip over for initiative, right? Everything's reset. Yep. Humans get five. Zombies get five. Lull. Oh, see, here we go. So the lull. So five and five. So it's a lull. 
But because it's nighttime, zombies get one action. And yeah, that's definitely what they're going to do. So with their one action, they're going to go brains on this mob. Just activate these three together. Um, this top one here, Horde, he's going to go ahead and attack. Cool, Mark Rona. And attack the uh, refugees here. So close combat. One hit if enemy damaged. They are damaged, so they're a good hit. Um, close combat defense. My, one hit and minus one if they're in any cover, which they are in um, the woods, actually. So, so they can reduce the hit from the zombies to zero, and they inflict a hit on the zombies. So, what do you know? They fought back. No weapons? The Riff Raff refugees have an N, which means no weapons. I don't know. There's maybe they had a bunch of like clubs or something. I guess they went eight. All right. So, they fight, fight out the zombies. Hey, it happens. That's war, right? That's the zombie apocalypse for you. All right, so these mob here, go ahead and attack these regular refugees here, move into that hex and attack them. Boom, we got close combat. Where are we at? Vicious, so one hit if vicious. And then, boom, close combat defense. One hit if day, one hit if heavy weapons. Neither applies, so he takes, this refugee takes a hit. Ugh. So he is wounded. And he'll go ahead and retreat. Retreat up to this hex here. And this zombie will move in. Um, and now I notice we have chaos here. Three and two, so a total of five. And -da, five. Human healing. The human player may choose one of two options. Move one damage level from each of any two units on the map, or place one previously eliminated army or civilian group unit back into the human unit cup. Huh. Um... All right, what do we get to do? Or I can heal one damage level from each of any two units. What do I got damage that would help? Um, this one refugee and then this refugee, but he's he's surrounded. He's done for. Sorry. Uh, I'm saying I know what I'm doing. I'm keeping the I'm taking the uh, SWAT unit back, putting him back in the cup over here. Nice. We're in the cup, I should say. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Cool. All right. Um, is that it? No. Nope. He gets to go. All right, so he's going to go ahead and choose one of them attack. Um, I'm going to say the heroes cause the most mischief, so he's draw naturally drawn towards the sounds of the hero's uh, loud motorcycle. They go ahead and move in there and attack. Close combat. No hardified, so it's not going to be any hits. That's it. Close combat defense. Armored or shielded, he's armored, so it's going to be one hit and reduce one hit. So he does actually inflicts a hit on the horde and pushes the horde back to that. And that is it for that action round. Uh, let's go ahead. We have our uh, rated. I never put one on him. Blind cell. All right. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, call it there. We're about an hour. Yeah, we're in an hour. So I think we can call it there. All right. That is Dead Reckoning, um, human versus zombie battle royale. Okay, not battle royale. You get the idea. Fun little war game. Not complicated at all. The letters on the counter throw you off a little bit. But other than that, it's, it's all in the play rates down here. Again, I know you guys can't see the whole play rate, but it, the sequence of play, your actions, your fear factor, size, assault, defense, speed, it's all on the play rate. You just got to look. And very quickly you learn, you know, attack, defense, movement. So, um, and then the size is listed under horde, mob, squad, platoon, whatever, company. Etc. So, all right, that is Dead Reckoning. Let me know what you guys think of the game. Um, if you want to see more of something like this, any of these kind of this fun one-offs or whatever, just goofy, you know, goofy games like this. Um, I own a few um, things like this where, especially in Herman Lutman game, you know it's going to be fun, right? You know that he's going to take something like zombies and actually turn it into a legit war game, um, which is fantastic. So. Other than that, if you guys are watching this in October here, happy Halloween, happy Spooktober. I uh, hope you enjoy your month. And for watching it afterwards, hey, hope you still enjoyed the video. So until next time, guys, later.